Hello everybody, my name is Lars. I am re a t returning Magic the Gathering player, getting back into Magic Arena, and um, I wanted to make this video to showcase a deck I've been playing around with here on Standard 2022 Ranked that I've been having some fun with. Uh, so the whole point of the deck pretty much is we're playing Cleric Tribal with Teleportation Circle. Um, we're utilizing cards like Righteous Valkyrie, which can give you buffs, uh, Skemfar Shadow Sage, which can trigger life gain or damage dealt to your opponent upon entering. Um, he also has a big butt, so he plays very well with Righteous Valkyrie. She likes big butts, she cannot lie. Uh, Teleportation Circle lets you bounce cards like this, or Priest of Ancient Lore, or Elite Spellbinder, Professor of Symbology, um, Potion of Healing, um, just all these different cards that have enter the battlefield uh, type triggers. Uh, very useful to bounce in and out. If your opponent is holding a bunch of cards in hand and you don't like that, you can just keep bouncing Spellbinder to keep putting them off their cards. If you are running low on cards in your hand, you can keep bouncing Priest of Ancient Lore to get your cards back. Same with the Potion of Healing. Um, if you're looking for outs and you don't have anything in the hand, you can bounce your Professor of Symbology to check one of these sideboard cards, like Environmental Sciences if you're off your lands, Reduced to Memory or Necrotic Fumes if your opponent has something that you need to get rid of and just can't kill it or you're just having a hard time dealing with it. Pest Summoning if you're up against an aggro deck and you need extra blockers. Expanded Anatomy if you're up against a control deck and you got something to stick. This is not bad to just kind of keep jamming them in the face and force them to do something. And Introduction to Annihilation for the same reason Reduced to Memory or Necrotic Fumes, just so you can kill something off that's being problematic. Your main win con is either jamming out damage with uh, Valkyrie and some dudes, or Shadow Sage triggers with the Teleportation Circle. Or you can use the Angel of Destiny effect if you are more closer, if you're closer to the 35 life requirement for this card, that would be a very good win condition. Um... I've, I've won plenty of games where I just jammed an Angel of Destiny into the face just to restart re regaining my life, and they just couldn't deal with it. So instead of trying to bring their life down, I just brought my life up and just won the game. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Um, I have some matches to showcase it in action. So uh, let's get into those. Last night I had some pretty decently okay matches. Let's see how not so great ones today. This is a pretty keepable hand. I've got, I've got two life spawn. I can basically play them turn two, three, land. So we can go ahead and play a clerical life spawn into a righteous Valkyrie if we want to. How much we want to commit. The Doom Scar, maybe. We're just going to go ham, we're going to go for the full damage. Doom Scar. Damn it. Fine. Alright. Next turn we can poison the cup to remove any obstacles and we can swing for four. If there's no obstacles in the way. Swing with the life spawn. The block. We'll foretell. And we'll leave it at that.
I force him to pretty much give up all of his stuff right now. Or... It's an exile. Keep making him destructible will do nothing. Yeah, there we go. Alright, that's why we run the Symbologist. That way we can get tech cards like that. We can just deal with stuff. Alright, I'm not keeping... I don't want to keep this. But I got a Potion of Healing, that's another draw. Um, Professor of Symbology, I can... I can keep this hand. Oh, Luminarch Aspirin turn two? Let's just do that. We'll go Aspirant turn... No, let's do Life Spawn turn two, and we'll do Aspirant turn three, and then we'll get a 4-4. Four, four. Unless he just kills my Life Spawn. That's fine. Kill this one too. Not gonna attack because I don't want to trade with the displacer beast. Let's see if he uses a removal spell on this. Probably will have a poison the cup just then. Is this a. Uh... Spell. Next turn we can Angel of Destiny, but I feel like he's got a counter spell or a kill spell just at the ready for something like that. So I think I'll just play Teleportation Circle and just start gaining um, hand value off the Potion of Healing. With the teleportation circle, we can bounce the potion of healing. Just draw cards. Yep. We're just gonna burn him. Ping him for four. Then we're gonna just end turn. Ping him for four.
I wonder if he can trigger the Displacer Beast effect in response to the stack. Nah, I can't. He's gonna board wipe now? Because that would... Is that what he's holding is a board wipe, maybe? It could be a Doom Scar and he doesn't have his second white source for it. I'll, I'll take seven if he wants to attack. Is he gonna board wipe? Okay. Copies of the Damagoth Wo Woe Eater? Okay. Discard a card. Okay. For five, and now he has to sack a bunch of creatures, right? He gets to keep one of them. Yep, he drew his whole hand. He drew like half his deck. Just, I, w I wasn't able to avoid that happening no matter what I did. I could have gone to just heal myself instead then. And go for the Angel of Destiny win. And if he doesn't have any thing really all that great, I could still try to just go for that. That's fine. Gain three, bounce the sage, maybe gain four. Oh, it didn't work. Angel of Destiny attacked the and we had the life amount. I guess the beginning of the end step the telecreation circle acted at the same time, so that's that makes sense. That's fine. in those those vials which those vials are actually really good two mana enter play draw a card you can bounce it with the teleportation circle you can sack it for extra life 
Um, the extra life triggers a bunch of different th things. It's value all around. I'd say it's really good. I'm going to keep this because of the fact that we have the Cleric of Life spawned into the Professor of Symbology. No matter what. So we've got we've got a play. And we're up against a mill deck. So fun. Fun, fun, fun. Mill is so fun to play against. Except it's not. <laughs> I really like mill. I think it's a cool strategy. I hate it when it's efficient. Because it's really, really boring to play against because your opponent doesn't do anything. They just counter everything you do and mill everything off your deck and you just sit there and you can't do anything. Since this hit the board, I'm going to go ahead and just go for the expanded anatomy attempt. We have our two Angel of Destinies in play. All we need to do is pick up a land and just avoid a counterspell. We're good to go. We'll force him to use it on expanded anatomy. Or, if they want to just do that. Fine with that too. I try to force a counter spell out of him. Okay, so that was a kill. That was a poison the cut. That is perfectly fine. Likely doesn't have a two mana counter spell ready to go. Play another card, play another card, play another card, play another. Mill me to a land, mill me to a land, come on. Please, no counter spell, come on. These these types of decks aren't are just very unfun to play against. There's, there's literally zero interaction. You play you you try to play your stuff. They don't let you play your stuff. And technically, it's not zero interaction. It's just. But it's fine, we got an Angel of Destiny to stick, now he has to draw a kill spell. A kill spell. That's good for us. We're gonna go for our 35 health win. Or that's our game plan. He has to try to mill us before we hit it. Alright, we 
block the soaring thought thief. We eliminate that section of the mill. He's got he's only got the storm of a hall of storm giants and anything he top decks. But we have this. Alright. Angel of Destiny's first hit will trigger. The first strike hit will trigger the life gain to go above 27, which will trigger the Valkyrie buff. So the second hit will give us uh, 6 damage, I think. Yep. And that's game. We're above 36. 35. Cha ching. That's how you beat up Mel. I like playing decks. I like playing decks more so that you can interact with. That I can make a play, my opponent can make a play, that we can do stuff with. Aggro deck. Fun. Let's, uh, we're a little bit off our land here, so let's get environmental sciences. We'll gain some life off of it, too. That's fine, I'm not, I wasn't gonna block the javelin here anyway. Okay, so next turn I can just jam. Okay. I've got a I've got a Demon's Disciple to sack away this token. Next turn we just play Priest of Ancient Lore, Priest of Ancient Lore, stuff like that. He's playing out his whole hand right now. I don't know why he did that. That seems very counterproductive. Like, very, very much counterproductive. I just seemed... That seemed pointless. He could have just traded using the tokens, then used those tokens to ping my priest... Ping my planeswalker away. 
ping the priest of ancient lore or the disciple or something basically pinged away a bunch of my blockers to create a more favorable board state for himself but instead he just went ahead and did that i don't see the reason for that Now he has to force one of them onto the Demon's Disciple. He wants to kill it. There he goes. I'll use the other Poison Cup to get rid of the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, most likely. We have a slightly more stable board state. We are out of cards though, and we are on a we are on a clock now. Uh okay. We kill Zario. He doesn't have much in, on board. We just take this, right? I lost one battle. <laughs> hmm. We block, we still take a damage. We win. Oh, 
Unless he's got three damage right to my dome. Yeah, even when we're on the back foot against aggro, we can stabilize against them fairly easily. We can come out on top. This deck is is not bad against aggro. In fact, I'd say aggro is probably it's one of its best matchups.